Hey College Success, I um, hope you had a great spring break and we are going to jump back in it. So I am hoping that you are refreshed maybe after a little bit of enjoyment or you know maybe one less thing on your plate. A lot of you may still have worked or had kids at home. Um, true was for me for both of those but it was nice a little bit just a little bit of a break. All right so as I said, we're going to jump right back in. We're week nine. This week runs from March 22nd through the 28th. We're going to scroll all the way down. You don't have nearly as much to scroll through. Here we go. Um, before I get into week nine, I guess, let me just remind you, if you haven't had a chance to look at your final project videos, I do have your directions in there and the steps one and two video loaded in there. So you can see like... I have steps three and four and five, and then a review in there. We're not there yet. This is simply for steps one and two. So if you have not viewed that video, uh, please make sure you do so. It goes over your final project, which is due the last week of the semester, and it's good to kind of get started on that. The earlier, the better. All right. Week 9, Chapter 4, again, March 22nd through the 28th. You can see we are starting Chapter 4, so we've hit the halfway point. We are on the tail end of the book now, four, five, six, seven. So we are going to um, be talking about soft skills. And you can see there's no discussion post. There's no discussion board in this week. There are just two assignments due by Sunday, and that'll count for your week nine attendance. And as usual, if you only complete one assignment, you get half attendance points. So I'll go into the materials folder, and you'll see that we have our objectives and the chapter slides, which I'll pull up right here. So again, chapter four is about strengthening soft skills. So what are soft skills? Well, here's a list. It's not comprehensive by any means because there are lots of soft skills. These are just some examples. And you may hear soft skills also called, we've used this in this class already, transferable skills. So it literally means they can transfer from one field to another. It doesn't matter if you're in business, in IT, in healthcare, in education, you still should have a good chunk of these soft skills established. Um, and some of them are obviously going to be more important than others. It just depends on your field. But overall, these are really important skills to have. So in every field, you want to be able to problem solve. And that's going to look different, whether you're an engineer or you're a nurse, but you still need those problem solving skills. You still need to be able to think critically, to make decisions, to communicate in some fashion, whether it's filling out like a, some kind of incident report or you're filling out a patient portal, uh, it doesn't matter. You're trying to uh, communicate in some way. You want to be able to organize, to plan, to time manage, uh, to be professional. So what does it mean to be professional? What does it mean to be professional? Again, this is really dependent upon your field because you can be professional in every field you're in, but it just might look a little differently. But some characteristics of professionalism do transcend. Um, you know, my very first job was McDonald's when I was 15. And let me tell you, working fast food is difficult. It is, um, especially when you're a teenager. But there are certain rules when you work in fast food, certain things to be professional. Just like I found out, you know, I worked at a jewelry store when I was in college. I've taught in K through 12. So no matter what job I've had, I've had to be professional. And it just it looks a little differently depending on the field. But I would say some real, real commonalities, no matter where you are, of professionalism is being respectful you know, making sure that you're aware of other people, you're respectful, whether that means you're speaking in a respectful way, you are behaving in a way that is not going to be offensive, um, you're hardworking, you're responsible, and even the word responsible might mean different things in different fields, but these are some commonalities. And so it's important for you as a future entrepreneur, as a future LPN, as a future, you know, help desk specialist, whatever it is, that you know what it means to be professional in your field. This also means sending professional emails. Um, I do not know any of you personally. You know, I have not met, well, I can take that back. I've met with a couple of you um, via Collaborate or Zoom. So I've seen you, I've seen your face. Um, but for most of you, I've never seen you outside of this class and our interaction um, in an actual classroom, um, I think maybe a couple of you I had in a previous semester, now that I'm kind of looking at my list real quick, I know two of you I've had in 
face-to-face -face classes, um, whether it was last spring or last fall. But like it or not, when you take a, an online class, purely online, the only way that the instructor can, and I'm going to use the word judge, it's not like a, it's not a judgment, but the only way they can like evaluate you, judge you in that way, is through your written work. Because it's just, you're not face-to-face. -face. You're not in a classroom. You're not being able to communicate in that way. And so, obviously, you have your work you turn in, but then your messages that you communicate with your instructor are also the main ways that that instructor knows you. And so being professional in your emails is really important. So what does that mean? Just means addressing them by name. Um, it means signing your name. It means just real quick double checking, make sure, you know, spelling, punctuation, grammar, it all looks okay. Um, one thing that I have to break my habit of as well sometimes is like the text language. You know, the way I text my friends, I'm not going to use that same text language when I send an email to a colleague. You know, I'm not going to use abbreviations or things like that. So just kind of looking over things of that nature. Um, I will share that sometimes I have students where um, they'll send me like extremely personal descriptions of how they're ill. <laughs> and it's just like a little, a little too much. So like for, for that, for example, you know, giving an explanation, but not going overboard with it, making sure that you're kind of keeping that professional line. Um, because again, if you're online, that's the only way they know you. And then to translate it to a bigger picture, when you go to apply for a job and you send your resume or your cover letter, um, whether we like it or not, if you have some typos or some issues with your cover letter or your resume, some employers might just put it to the side. And you might have some great experience, great content, which is why I think it's important to overlook some of that stuff. But some people are not going to bother because their philosophy is, well, if they couldn't take the time to proofread their resume, they're not going to take the time to do the job correctly. Um, and that's just something we have to be aware of, that there are people who that is their belief, and that's fine. That's their belief. And that's why it's important to come across very professional in any kind of written communication you have. Um, so that is kind of the downfall to only being able to communicate with like online instructors or, you know, in a potential employer in a virtual format is you just have to make sure you come across in that professional sense. Um, I will also say, just as a quick kind of like, hey, think about it this way. Often your online instructors, me, myself included, we teach literally hundreds of online students in like four or five different classes. And so just adding in, you know, hi, doctor or professor or whatever the title is, I am so-and-so from your anatomy and physiology class. Or, you know, just adding in real quickly so that they can real quickly like, oh, okay, I know what class this is referring to. Um, so just another way of just kind of helping out that situation. Okay, so we talked about professionalism, talked about soft skills. Let's talk about time management. There are some people who really struggle with this and other people who have it mastered. So it's one of those things, in my uh, opinion, that can always kind of be improved on or can be you know, looked at to see how it's going. Even if you're great at managing your time, sometimes like picking up extra tips or tricks can be helpful. So questions to ask yourself, you know, we've talked about goal setting in this class. So think about your goals. Are you using your time in a way that's consistent with your goals? If your goal is to get a certain GPA and it's rather high GPA, are you spending your time preparing, studying, investing in your coursework? Because if you're not, if you're spending, you know, four hours a day watching Netflix, which hey, I am not knocking Netflix, but if you're spending that much time, are you really being consistent with your goals and your time? Do you have a good work school life balance? Okay, And in your textbook, you will see that the magic number, if you are working, now I say this with a grain of salt because everyone is different and everyone makes their own situation work for them. Statistically speaking, and we all know that when we say statistically speaking, it's just numbers. It's not individual stories. So just keep that in mind um, that someone who is going to school full time ideally should only work part time. What they found is students who were going to school full time and worked more than 40 hours a week 
struggled. And students who went to school full time and didn't work at all struggled. It was the students who worked full time, or excuse me, went to school full time and only worked 19 to 20 hours part time that they had found that sweet spot. The reason students who went to school and did not work struggled is because they procrastinated. They thought, oh, I have time, I have time, and then they ran out of time. And the students who went to school and worked full time were overwhelmed. So they said a good work school life balance is going to school and working part time. Again, let me say, there are some people who can rock it working full time and going to school full time. And there are some people who can really do well going to school and not working at all. And there are some people who struggle going to school and working part time. So it is not a hard and fast rule. Just please remember that. But it also is a time to take stock and say, okay, is my work school life balance working for me? If not, where do I have the power to change it? Sometimes we don't have the power to change our hours that we work. Um, sometimes we don't, you know, we're, we're just not able to make the adjustments. So we have to look maybe at a separate thing and say, okay, how can we, you know, what can we tweak here? So can you engage in actions that helps you complete tasks on time? And how can you improve your use of time? And one of your assignments this week is going to talk about how you are spending your time. So again, this goes back to matching your time with values and goals. How do you spend your time? Um, are they going, is the way that you're spending your time helping you achieve your goals? We want to avoid time traps. So time traps are literally things that trap your time. So there, again, there's a line between um, relaxing in me time and overindulgence. So for instance, like watching an episode or a movie of something, that's relaxing, right? That's you time or family time or whatever the case is. But watching, like you binge watch an entire series while you have a paper due in like two days, that is overindulgence, right? So that kind of thing. You have to find your line. So you want to first know what are your time traps. Are your time traps streaming? Are your time traps your phone, social media? Sometimes your time traps can be a person. Maybe you spend just a lot of time with your friends, which is important. But again, are you spending time with your friends to avoid doing work? Um, you know, so self-impose some time limits. Like, all right, I'm going to play Madden for 45 minutes and then I'm going to study. You know, so put some time limits on yourself and then reward yourself if you need to. Like, all right, first I'm going to study and then I'm going to play video games. So use those as a reward if that helps motivate you. So this is kind of where I talked about that work school life balance is important. Um, I know with COVID, it's my work and personal life has just melted to, to one another. Um, unfortunately, with an online teaching schedule, mostly, I am on the computer starting at 6am. And then sometimes I'm on the computer until 11 at night, and then off and on throughout the entire day. And there's no there's no line drawn. And I know that's the truth. That's the truth for a lot of you more than likely right now. Um, work and life might be blending together in this virtual COVID world. So you have to kind of find that balance. Take time for yourself. You know, I took my kids to the park last night because it was so nice. And I went walking and we went to the park. And my goodness, I felt guilty at first for not being on the computer grading. But I was like, you know what? From five to seven, it'll be okay. It will be okay to kind of just step away and do some things with my family for a little bit. So finding that balance is so important and it's needed. It's absolutely necessary. So what we don't want to do though is procrastinate. So again, we always want to find that line. We don't want to overwhelm ourselves or, you know, get stressed out. A little stress is good. Too much stress is not. So what do we do? We want to combat procrastination. So if you have a research paper due in three weeks, that's a pretty big task. Break it down into manageable ones. Like, all right, days one and two, I'm going to develop my topic. Days three and four, I'm going to start gathering sources. Days five and six, I'm going to create an outlet. So see how those tasks are a little smaller, so it's not quite as overwhelming, and then hopefully you're not piling up to the very end. And then reward yourself for taking action. And multitasking, we don't want to do this. A lot of research is coming out from MIT about how multitasking used to be valued. And we're not talking about real, like, life multitasking. Uh, you know, watching TV while we're preparing dinner. Not that kind of multitasking. Academic multitasking. So, you know, trying to watch a TV show, but you're also maybe sneaking in some math homework. Or you're sitting in a, a classroom or, in this case, listening to a lecture, but you're also scrolling through your phone. 
So we want to make sure that we're not multitasking because tasks actually take longer when you multitask and you're not going to enjoy the task as much and it's not going to be as high quality. So you want to single task it. So they did like a little study and you can see this in your textbook that, um, for instance, they they showed how multitasking can actually negatively impact people around you. So if you're in a computer lab on campus, for instance, like a lot of our classes are, if you're looking at something that is like personal in nature and someone near you happens to see it, you've now distracted them and your multitasking has kind of negatively impacted them. So the study is kind of interesting inside your chapter if you want to look more at that. So single task, remove distractions, make sure you're looking fully at the current task you're working on, and then um, any other tasks just kind of write down so you don't forget about them. All right, the chapter then starts talking about like interpersonal skills. Well, what does that mean? So communication skills, you know, communication is not just what we say, it's how we say it. It's the nonverbal communication. It's how we listen. It's how we respect and we keep an open mind. You know, even if we might not agree with someone, being open-minded enough to hear their opinion. Again, you don't have to. I think I've said this in a previous conversation. Um, maybe it was my other class. Uh, but you don't have to agree with someone to be able to listen and try to understand where they're coming from. You don't have to change your own mind, but that's part of like critical thinking is listening to other perspectives and kind of maybe it helps reinforce the way that you believe. So just communication skills, conflict, you know, how do you handle conflict? There are five different ways. And I am curious to see like, I want you to look and see, you know, are you more of an integrator? Are you more of an avoidance? Are you more of a dominating? So there are different styles and you might be in one situation an obliging style, but in a different situation, a compromising style. So it could be context dependent. Then there's emotional intelligence, understanding your own emotions. Like, okay, this really ticks me off, but I'm not going to let it show on my face. I am going to try to take some breaths and react appropriately. Then also picking up on the emotions of others. So being able to read faces, read the room is all part of emotional intelligence. And then finally, we start talking about kind of like teamwork and collaboration, the five R approach to group work. I know in previous chapters, we've talked about, you know, how to make a group situation more effective. So establish rapport, get to know who your group members are. What are the rules of your group? What are the roles of someone, a note taker, a time taker, timekeeper? Um, get ready to work, so be prepared, do any work you need to do ahead of time, and then evaluate how is it going. All right, we also need to take in consideration that we live and work in a very diverse society. And so just being aware of other people's beliefs and attitudes. Some of you might be in a field in which you're going to consistently interact with people with backgrounds not your own. And I would say that's probably true for most of our fields. But some of you may even have to travel to different cultures for your field. So just knowing the differences and the different customs and being able to respect that. Um, our chapter will also talk about reducing stereotype threat and ways that you can kind of make sure you're focusing on some internal changeable things you can do. And finally, developing leadership skills. Our textbook says our most um, effective type of leader is a transformational leader, someone who is charismatic, but they're intellectual and they can encourage you to do things. They respect individual differences and they're very uh, inspiring. <sighs> okay, there's chapter four. So let's talk about your two assignments this week. Again, both due by Wednesday. In our assignment folder, you'll see that we have a where did the time go assignment piece of chapter four is time management. So you'll pull this up and it's going to ask you uh, to kind of talk about where did your time go? So it says for there are two parts. You'll see there's another part down here. There are 168 hours in a week. And so if you don't add up to exactly 168, that's OK. You might be a little less. You might be a little over. Um, just maybe you've counted something twice. Hopefully you're not like 20, 30, 40 hours over or 20, 30, 40 hours under. You know, you kind of want to look at that. So take a take a look and see, like, how many hours do you spend a day studying or attending class or both? So both in class and studying, working, travel time, um, appointments that you go to on a regular basis. So not just like, oh, you have a doctor's appointment once every six months or something. No, a regular appointment. Maybe you attend a service every week. Maybe every day you take your children somewhere. Um, how much time do you prepare and eat your meals? How many hours a day do you sleep? What would you consider your recreation time? And then some time traps. And you'll see after each of those, you'll times it by seven to give you how many hours you spend that in a week. 
and then you'll get your total number of hours. So let's go down here. After you've done that, that's part A. Part B, now you're going to analyze that time. What activity takes up most of your waking day? That means don't include your sleep. So how much do you spend doing whatever activity? Do you spend the most time on recreation, the most time working? Is this a productive way to spend your time? Why or why not? What can you change to be more efficient with your time management? Or maybe you already think you're doing a pretty good job. And then did you learn anything about your time management? So for instance, I had students before say, wow, I never realized how much time I spent in the car, like just driving places. And some of that is unavoidable. You have to drive to work, to school, to your kids' things, or whatever the case might be. Some of it is changeable. Like, wow, I never realized how much time I spent in front of the TV. So this is just like an analysis. So when you're done with that, you'll, of course, go in, and you'll make sure that you browse and submit. The second thing is another college resource reflection. This time it's on the Writing Center. So you can see there is a, it's like six minutes or so video. So I'll encourage you to watch that video. I'm also going to say, hey, go ahead and find, this might time me out, so just bear with me for a second. Um, under, there we go, academic support, here's the Writing Center right here. You can also look here and explore some links. So this will give you some information. There's another quick little video in there. I'm not sure how dated that is, though. Um, so you'll go in here, and it'll tell you about the Writing Center. It's going to have some resources. So let's say you didn't want to actually go to the Writing Center but you wanted to get some information, like say, okay, I want help on my sentence structure. Well, I click on that and look, there's a bunch of resources in here that could help me. So there's a nice link there to get some resources without necessarily even going to the Writing Center itself. Although if you wanted to go to the Writing Center, here's all the information. We also have a Writing Center online, so you can click there if you haven't signed up for an account. I, it logged me right in. You would sign up for an account, and this is showing you you know, your online availability. If you're not comfortable making an in-person appointment because of COVID or just in general, you can meet with someone online. You make an appointment here, like you click on it, it'll bring up a form. Um, it'll ask you like, hey, wait a minute, are you sure? And it's going to tell you where this is located. You know, it's in organizations, it's in Blackboard, but this is how you schedule and you can attach documents here and you can create an appointment and then eventually inside your blackboard once you join there's going to be an organization and it was on here I might have to there um it used to be the writing center down here um you'll have like that writing center and it'll walk you through all of that in your sign up when you do this when you go to sign up okay so that's the writing center online so I really do encourage you to obviously watch that video that was embedded in week nine. Again, it's a rather quick video. It's about six minutes. It's kind of meta, right? Watch a video within a video. Um, so or at least I'm talking about a video in a video. So watch that video. Explore a little bit of the Writing Center. Um, you can also get to it if you're here on the home page under info for current students, you'll get this list here and you'll see that the Writing Center is right here as well. It talks to you a little bit about that. Okay, So lots of places to go and get familiar with the Writing Center. And then as part of your reflection, again, this is you know a four to six sentence reflection. Please do not just summarize what you learned about the Writing Center. I don't need to know their hours. I don't need to know where they're located. I know this already. How can you benefit from the Writing Center? Maybe talk about classes you're currently taking that you could use the help on with the Writing Center. Maybe talk about issues you've had with writing in the past. Or if you've used the Writing Center, talk to me about that experience. Okay, so again, it's about you. It's not about just the facts. Bring it back to a personal level. All right, those, those are your two assignments for week nine. Make sure you submit them by Sunday for week nine attendance. Have a great week back from spring break. Bye.